A week or two ago, Rand Paul went on CNN to, deb to debate the issue of Syria with Tap Jaker. And uh, Rand, of course, wants out of the Middle East. And uh, Tap Jaker fell flat on his face when trying to uh, take on Rand Paul. Watch Rand run circles around him. Well, I think a major issue here for people who oppose the president's announcement is, is not just the withdrawal of U.S. troops, but the way it's being done um, unilaterally uh, with little consultation uh, with experts about it. Yeah. So, but, but I want you to take a listen. Here's the thing, Jay. Well, just take a listen to what retired four-star general and the former top diplomat charged with countering ISIS, General John Allen, told me earlier this week, and I want to get your response. Look, we all thought at one point that they, they would come home. But a precipitous departure of our troops could create a military disaster. And a global coalition will think twice about coming to help the United States if we need to in a great emergency because they know we won't consult with them when the time comes. You're always talking about the importance of alliances and the importance of diplomacy. Don't you think that the way this is being done without consultation yeah. with allies could lead but, to... But, Go ahead. <laughs> but here's the thing, Jake. You get these generals and they'll say, oh, if we bring the troops home from Afghanistan, that's precipitous also. It's like we've been there 17 years. How does it become precipitous to leave after 17 years? The president said when we went into Syria very clearly, we're going to defeat ISIS. That was our goal. Then all these people who believe in forever war change the goal. They change the goalpost. They change the mission. And they started saying, oh, we're going to stay there until Iran and Russia leave. It's like that means we're staying forever. You know, Iran's not leaving anytime soon unless you want to fight Iran. Do you want another war with Iran? American people are tired of war. So they want another war with Iran. Do they want us to have a war with Russia as well? I think we need to find a peaceful solution. And it is complicated because it's going to involve the Turks. It's going to involve the Russians, the Iranians, the Iraqis, us, There's the Kurds. I mean, all of these forces are going to have to come together. And it isn't going to be easy to find peace. But leaving our troops there is sort of like a tripwire to a much larger war. The war has every danger every day of becoming an explosive, expansive war. And so I think the president is doing the best thing. He, doesn't, he, said, he said we weren't going to be for nation building. We're not going to go create a nation out of that chaos of Syria or Afghanistan. We're going to take care of things we've got here at home. And I think actually the people are with him. Washington's against him. But this wouldn't be the first time that Washington doesn't represent the people very well. Well, I hear what you're saying, but I guess one of the concerns also is if the U.S. withdraws from Syria precipitously and unwisely, then the question is, will the U.S. have to go back again? Um, take a listen, for example, right. to something President Trump said during the 2016 campaign about Obama withdrawing U.S. troops precipitously and too early. Take a listen. Obama is the founder of ISIS, the founder. Now, President Trump calls Obama the founder of ISIS because he says Obama's decision to withdraw troops from right. Iraq created this power vacuum in the Middle East. Does right. the president, doesn't he now? I think it's important. Go ahead. I, th I, think it's, I think it's important that we get history correct here. Where did ISIS begin? They began in Syria in the midst of a civil war. The civil war got worse as the U.S., Qatar, and also Saudi Arabia were supplying arms to people like ISIS, al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, Sunni extremists fighting against Assad. The problem is, and this is the mainstream foreign policy problem of our country, we think we always have to be involved. Maybe when there's two evils, Assad may be an evil, Sunni extremists may be an evil, maybe we shouldn't always have to choose a side and be involved in war. But we got involved in that war and we added to the chaos and so the millions of people that left that's on, the, on the, hands, the, the hands of many Americans who said, like Hillary Clinton, oh, we've got to be in there. We've got to somehow get rid of Assad. It should not be the job of America to be replacing regimes around the world. This is what President Trump recognized in Iraq, that that was the biggest foreign policy disaster of the last several decades. And he's right. But guess what? All of these Republicans and all these generals you quote, they still don't get that the Iraq war was a mistake. And they're wrong, and I think the people actually know it. And if this were put to the people, th this is polled all of the time. I think 69% of the people were polled in a Pew poll recently and said we should get out of Afghanistan, whether it's sooner, later, or immediately, people are ready to come home. Uh, you, you're still not talking about the way that we're doing it, but I do want to ask you just one philosophical point, and I, I don't want you to, to think that I'm being rude here, but I'm just wondering, in the last 20 years, is there any act of U.S. intervention with military force abroad that you support? 
Uh, do you did you support going? Yeah, I supported. Go ahead. Yes, after we were attacked on 9-11, I did support to go into Afghanistan. I would have voted for the resolution, but we're ignoring the resolution. It said we'd go after those who planned, abetted, aided the people who attacked us. It never said anything about associated forces, never said anything about war in Yemen, Somalia, Mali, Syria. None of this was ever authorized by Congress. So what we are doing in like seven different war theaters right now is unconstitutional and we shouldn't be doing it. But I did support going in after 9-11 but I have not supported the nation building. I would have declared victory long ago and come home. And so when the president declares victory over ISIS, he's exactly right. We took back 99% of their land. Aren't these people gonna stand up and now fight for themselves? Can they not do anything? And it doesn't work to have Americans there policing Muslim lands. It just engenders more terrorism. The longer Americans stay, the more terrorism you'll have. We are so forward deployed that we can attack on a moment's notice from anywhere on the planet. So us leaving doesn't mean we don't have to be involved. You know, we are offshore, under the waters. We are everywhere mm -hmm. around the planet. There is nothing about us leaving that means that we couldn't be involved if we had to be involved. But really, the people who live there, the Muslims who live in these lands need to police the Muslims who live in these lands. If it's Americans, it'll always be seen by those who live mm -hmm. there as some sort of uh, religious crusade and it encourages more terrorism. So the sooner we get out of that mess, the better. Hot diggity diggity damn. That was well done. Um, that was a Mortal Kombat flawless victory, as far as I could tell. So let's go through some of what uh, Tap Jaker says. He goes, well, listen, it's not the withdrawal that's the problem. It's the way it's being done. That's the problem. So in other words... I'm going to concern troll and nuance troll um, to try to run interference for the military industrial complex and the permanent war state. That's what Tap Jaker is doing. And it is, it's so infuriating because he's the worst because he dresses up his standard right wing establishment talking points as if it's like me. I'm just a serious journalist. That's all I am. No, you're not. All of your adversarialism is framed from the perspective of the establishment. So that's actually not adversarial. <laughs> that's the opposite. That's like smug talking points on behalf of the powerful. And I'm not even sure he realizes he's doing it, but that's certainly what he's doing. Um, then... Tapjaker acts like uh, the word of the generals and the national security state is like non-political gospel. It's like apolitical, above reproach gospel. But sir, the generals have said we can stay there. Yeah, the generals always say that, always. That was one of the issues. I mean, Lin look at Lyndon B. Johnson in Vietnam. The generals, okay, just uh, just uh, send some more troops, send some more troops, and we just got to stay there a little bit longer, and then we got to stay here, and we got to stay there. A good response from Rand Paul there would have been, Jake, do me a favor, define victory in Syria, and then when you're done with that, define victory in Afghanistan. Go. And he, he would have been like, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> he wouldn't have had an answer, because nobody even bothers to do it. That's how you know all these wars are bullshit. Nobody even bothers to do it! <laughs> So the original reason we were told that we have to go into Iraq is, oh my God, Saddam Hussein teamed up with Osama bin Laden and was behind 9-11. That wasn't true. Then that morphed to, ah, well, Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction. Uh, well, if he did, you would also have to establish that he was going to use them on us, and there was zero evidence for that. It was just rank fear-mongering. Um, and we found, it turned out he didn't have the weapons of mass destruction, and then they just moved the goalposts again to, he's a bad dictator. And <laughs> we prop up 73% of the world's dictatorships. But even if, okay, accept all of that. Mission accomplished, done. You know, uh, I don't, I don't see why we don't come home. If Saddam Hussein is dead, he's been dead for a while. The whole reason to go for going into Iraq is long gone, far away. <laughs> so, and then take Afghanistan, which Rand Paul mentioned there. Okay, the original idea was we have to get um, Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden is dead now, and he was in Pakistan when we got him. So why are we still in Afghanistan? Again, even, like, the weak, flimsy rationales they originally gave are now completely unmasked, and then they don't, 
they haven't even bothered to come up with a new narrative because permanent war is supposed to be the default. It's supposed to be the norm. And Rand Paul is one of very few who's speaking up against it and is like, um, not sure I'm with that. Not sure I'm with that at all. Uh, then I like um, one of the other arguments Tap Jaker uses because it 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 shows his premise, which is not a premise I agree with. I know Rand Paul doesn't agree with it. I know the majority of Americans don't agree with it, but he just accepts it. And that is, he says, if we leave, well, then we might have to go back again. For what? It's not like, it's not like, oh, if we leave, then obviously they're going to, you know, start coordinating an attack on Nebraska. That's not what's going to happen. What he means is, oh, if we leave, then what happens if there's more chaos that unfolds? Yeah, what the fuck does that have to do with us? See, his his premise is, we are the world police and we are above international law. So we get to do whatever we want, and it is, by definition, justice when we do it. And that premise, I just don't agree with. And I know Rand Paul doesn't agree with. And that's why Rand Paul brought up. The best part was, is there any war you support? As if that's like a gotcha. <laughs> He's so, he's such an establishment tool, Jake Tapper is. <laughs> You're not even for any wars, loser. Why does that make him a loser? <laughs> That's crazy. And by the way, he actually gave a perfectly reasonable answer. Uh, he's like, yeah, I was for Afghanistan because we got attacked on 9-11, and I thought Osama bin Laden was there, so I would support getting Osama bin Laden. Okay, perfectly reasonable because that is defensive in nature. But Jake Tapper's like, ha, you don't even support any war. <laughs> Uh, and his answer was, well, actually, yes, Afghanistan I did. But the point is, not the seven other illegal wars. Illegal wars. And there's no reckoning with that point from Tap Jaker or anybody else. They're just like, hmm, what? I just hear the Charlie Brown noise when you start talking about how what the U.S. does is oftentimes illegal and unconstitutional and against international law. And uh, oftentimes we act as the terrorist. Whenever you start criticizing us accurately, all I hear is, now here, let me give you another talking point about how John McCain is awesome. That's Tap Jaker's whole shtick. He's like, where are all the mavericks? Where are all the middle of the ground types? Like John McCain. Says a lot about what your politics are, even though he likes to pretend he's above politics. He's nowhere near above politics. He's an establishment tool.